It is still morning in Nigeria. Democracy is just eight years old. Our nation has changed for the better, but there is much left to do. Nigeria needs a leader who will work to solve Nigeria's problems and create a fairer, more economically vibrant nation. Umaru Yaradua is a leader with a plan to address Nigeria's most urgent concerns. Born into a family with a history of public service, Umar Yaradua's father, Malam Musa Yaradua, was a member of the House of Representatives and served as minister in the First Republic. He brought us up to believe in hard work, honesty, and discipline. And there's also something of uh, uh, the qualities of his father, Musa Yaradua, and his senior brother, late Shehu Yaradua, who I know uh, very, very well. If you like, you may say that they have long tradition of uh, public service, of uh, decency in their family. Yaradua was groomed to provide leadership, nurtured in tradition, but strengthened by his spirit and character. I draw my inspiration from, from God. Like my late father told me, serving humanity is service to God. The tradition that he is coming from is a tradition that radically changed the way Nigeria has been doing politics. It's a tradition that has always put people first. Yaradua is at heart a teacher, an academic with an analytical mind. He studied and taught chemistry at the university level for years. His was the greatest teacher that I've ever come across in chemistry. And that, of course, that has culminated into my being a doctor, a medical doctor here. He is a man who studies everything, from the intricacies of particle physics to economic policy. I read a lot. Even though I was a student of chemistry, I was interested in the development of my country. And that means I have to learn something about the economy of nations and the wealth of nations. Yaradua is well versed in economic leadership. There is no greater testament to his capacity to be president than his record of achievement as governor of Kassina State. And this is a governor that inherited a state treasury to the, with a negative balance of over 580 million. The state's finances turned out to be worse than we had uh, imagined. He injected a lot of funds in providing medical equipment and instruments. He bought theater equipment, he bought diagnostic facilities like endoscopes. So he's done quite a lot in the health sector. I believe Kasna State is unparalleled to any other state of the Federation. It was a product of organization. It was a product of an inspiring leadership and hard work. He is one of what we consider a good example of good governance and good leadership. That is almost a very new thing in Nigeria. I believe that his views are measured views and of course he understands what development is all about. Yaradua now has a plan for the nation, a clear course for success at home and on the international stage. The PDP Vision 2020 aspires to rank Nigeria among the 20 most developed economies in the world by the year 2020. His seven-point agenda begins decisively with power supply, the lifeblood of development. But you cannot build a modern economy without sufficient and sustainable and stable power and energy. When I declare a national emergency, that is making the nation to recognize this fact also, so that we raise the generation to 30,000 megawatts by 2011 and 50,000 megawatts by 2015. The next step comprises the fruit of the earth, agriculture and food security. And the first priority is that at least as a minimum, we must be able to feed ourselves as a nation. Food security 
means encouraging no commercial agricultural production and then investing heavily in research and development. Yaradua has made the development of agriculture paramount in his own state. Production has improved dramatically in Kasina as a result of improved techniques that will be implemented on a national basis. He helped us all with improved seeds, irrigation and pumping machines, pesticides and fertilizer. The third step is wealth creation and the vision to make families self-sustaining by putting Nigerians to work. The Nigerian elite has always talked about the national cake. No, the cake is the rent that is collected and they want to share it and consume it. We need to develop the primary sectors of production to generate wealth. Any incoming president, I'm sure we want to work with all the uh, uh, sectors in the economy, particularly banking finance, business, so that we will all pull together our energies, our capabilities, and produce a better climate, infrastructure, you name it, for the average Nigerian. The fight against corruption is an integral part of wealth creation. Corruption is the reason why we have bad image, bad reputation, and that nobody wants to do business with us. We have to address it, we have to change. And there is no society that can prosper and progress when you know, disrespect for law and order is being condoned and celebrated. Yaradua is known for his honesty and transparency. He is the only public officer who, at the time when he was elected, declared his own assets and made it public. In a society like ours, where the government is the major uh, earner and spender of revenue, it takes courage for a political leader to apply resources in the appropriate direction. Nigeria is a vast country. Yaradua is determined to change the way it moves. You need an efficient transport system to move people and goods, to support a modern economy. The mass movement of goods and people can only be based on railways and waterways. Road transportation by trucks and motor vehicles is totally inefficient to support you know, the rigors of our modern economy. Land ownership, the basis of economic growth. Land reform is just amending our land laws, specifically to change the structure of land ownership in Nigeria, so that you know, people in both the urban and rural areas can be able to bring their land as assets to play a part in the market. By not reforming the land laws, specifically the land use app, you are taking away trillions of dollars of assets from the market. Security as a necessary infrastructure. It is a constitutional responsibility to provide security for people and investments and goods and property. I'll look at it as part of the necessary infrastructure to develop a modern economy. And nowhere is security more an issue than the Niger Delta. Well, it's important for Nigeria simply because so, almost 90% of our foreign exchange earnings um, come, come from oil and gas. They say Niger Delta is the heart and lungs of, of Nigeria. And, you know, it's important for national development. From oil and gas, we are going to lay down the structure, the institutions and the, and the infrastructure is going to be, enable us to compete in the 21st century. The problems of the Niger Delta are huge, but I've often said it's a metaphor for looking at the complex issues of Nigeria because whatever you take in the Niger Delta, be it poverty, be it unemployment, and so on and so forth, you'll find these scenarios replicated right across the country. So I think we've, we, we've started on the right road um, at last. Uh, we have a chance to really begin to implement some of the policies that, that will pull us back from the brink. The seven-point plan is comprehensive and groundbreaking. But for Yaradua, one issue overshadows all others. That one issue is you know, the 
eradication of poverty. Then you have achieved the eradication to a large extent. Ignorance, disease, human misery. Citizens will enjoy prosperity, knowledge, wisdom, human happiness. And they would be able to realize the God-given potentials. You, you will have begun to recreate you know, the middle, the Nigerian middle class. The more you move in the direction of taking ordinary people and their welfare very seriously, the more you move in the direction that God himself wants you to move. Yaradua maintains that the way out of the cycle of poverty is through education, the final pillar of his seven-point plan, human capacity development. There isn't much that can be achieved without the necessary human capacity. You must have the knowledge and the skills. Without education, you can't do that. The federal government will intervene to give massive grants in education at all levels so that we are able to raise standards. So that the, the aim is that you know, if you have a graduate of civil engineering from any Nigerian university, he can fit in any company anywhere in the world. Yaradua's plan will ensure that Nigeria moves into the future quickly and efficiently. I believe that the thing to expect from him is beyond reform. I would call it economic uh, uh, transformation. He's uh, a committed person. He's a very prudent man, and he's not a spendthrift. And critical in this uh, attitude is humility. And obviously, of course, that listening ear is also paramount in this attitude. And I, I see those virtues in him. Humble, thoughtful, analytical, determined, a thriving, energetic leader. He plays squash for one and a half hours every day, and he does so vigorously. And this is somebody who spends uh, 15 to 18 hours in office. He and his running mate, good luck Jonathan, governor of Bielsa State, comprise a unique team for Nigeria, a new generation of leaders. The ticket we have at the moment from the PDPN is a peaceful one. And where there's peace, there will be prosperity. If there's less friction, then time will be used to make progress. I believe there is a great need you know, for transformation in this country, to transform Nigeria from an underdeveloped nation to an industrialized economy. Nigeria is a land of potential, rich in history, natural resources, and people. Nigeria is a powerhouse in, in, in West Africa, in fact, and indeed the whole of Africa. Our population figures indicate that one in five uh, Africans are from Nigeria. Um, you know, there are only 10 countries in the world with a population of over 80 million. Nigeria is one of them. Opportunity is now. I am passionate about this. I'm highly committed to it, and I recognize it as a great opportunity and I know such opportunities arise rarely in a generation. He will use the opportunity that he has had to make Nigeria a great nation. Vote Umaru Musa Eragwa. That is the promised destiny for Nigeria. With people like him there is hope and there is chance that we can get things proper and correct in this country and I am convinced about it, and I believe he is the man for now, for Nigeria. Nigerians are looking for hope and a vision to continue to lift them into prominence in the 21st century. For Nigeria of today, the sun is still rising. As president of Nigeria, it is my hope lead this country to a better future and I believe that tomorrow would be better than today. Umaru Musayaradua, a legacy of service, a vision for the future.